Rob, um, <laughs> what uh, is wrong with you? You know, I've wondered that myself many times. Um, I ask you this. I'm a glutton, I, for, I'm a glutton for punishment no, staying no. in this business for so long. Well, no, but here's the thing. You've got to be a little, um, you know, live in your mom's basement and practice guitar to be able to play the kind of guitar that you play. You've got to <laughs> sacrifice a big chunk of life. Like your yeah. 10,000 hours are already in, man. Yeah. Lo- oh, oh, yeah. Probably 30, 40. Th- I don't even know. I've yeah. Lost, I've lost track of that. I don't even know if 10,000 hours is enough, in all honesty. It's not. To really get. No, I don't agree with that. No. That book needs to be updated. It did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Trump being president is proof. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Yeah. A little low hanging fruit right there on the Drew Marshall show. Fruit, Rob, um, uh, you got into this, obviously, as, as a kid, as an infant. You were playing guitar uh, in the crib. Yeah. You know what? I, um, yes. I, <laughs> I, I, this is all I've done all my life, pretty much, in all honesty. I've, uh, I'm just lucky because I, I have two boys and I, I see and I teach at various colleges in the city and I see the struggle, people trying to find, young people, you know, trying to find their career path. And, yeah. I, uh, and I do tell the story. I'm lucky for sure that I knew at a young age what I wanted to do and I've kind of followed through on that. But I realize today there's so many options and choices out there for young people and I look at my guys and they're undecided. My How old are your guys? 17 and 21. Uh, temporarily, they'll be... Uh, temporarily, they'll that's be... a great way to say age. <laughs> yeah. How old are you? I'm 49, temporarily. <laughs> temporarily. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, they're both... You know, my other one's starting college next week again. He's going back second time. Um, but, you know, he's been trying to find himself, like, what he wants to do. And, like, you know, me, I'm looking at myself, geez, I was seven years old. I told my dad I wanted a guitar. So, I don't know. Uh, you were seven years old and you wanted a guitar? Yeah, we well, started me on accordion. I have Hungarian parents and they, I don't know for what reason, my dad bought me an accordion. <laughs> I did not like detested and protested. And for Christmas, he finally, because it was the summer or whatever, and that did not work out. That was you just know, chaos. The best thing for an accordion is a razor blade. <laughs> <laughs> the air just leaks out. Dad, just, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't I can't, work out. Like, this <laughs> it just sounds like Darth Vader with <laughs> asthma. <laughs> So, yeah, needless to say, you know, the guitar stuck at uh, yeah. seven. I got it for Christmas. I still have it to this day. And um, <clears throat> what uh, Now, you have a Godin in your hand. I do. They're, yeah, they've been wonderful. Yeah, this is a multi-act by Godin, and then I have Godin. another. Godin. Godin. That's fine. Godin. Did you ever eat Canadian poutine and... while you eat, while you play Godin? Uh, yeah. Let's have a little <laughs> listen to what that sounds like, just by itself. Just a little, uh, a little uh, example of your guitar. Oh, look there. Yeah. Okay, so here's when I, a couple things I need to say. First of all, mm. the owner of this station is a guitar freak. Oh. A really fantastic human being. His name is Michael Kane. Okay. Not that Michael Kane. Not that Michael Kane. The, uh, the other one. And, uh, and the first time I had Tommy Emanuel here on the show, uh, oh, Michael wow. came in to watch, and then he went home and threw out his guitar. Yeah. You know, that kind of a thing. But he yeah. loves the guitar. And, and what I've noticed over the years is that there are, oh, Jake. Is it Jay Calder? Does that ring a bell? Jay Calder. No, oh, Jay Graydon. Like um, He's anyway, I had a session guy, guy come in and, and a really, really neat guy and, and could play. But uh, what I noticed about Tommy is that his playing stands on its own. He doesn't need a, a big show behind him or production, et cetera, et cetera. No. And I want to say the same thing about you. I've been kind of studying your, your shtick, your thing. Mm-hmm. And you got you really have a ton of production around you. Um, why don't you go naked more often? That's just a weird way. Of yeah, saying no, that, no, no. Uh, well, you know, every song of my every song, every album of mine, I've been typically writing um, one finger style piece or two, and right. this one is no different. There's a, a tune I'm going to play today. I'm going to play naked guitar for you today. It's called Motion. Okay. And another one called Guitartic Stomp, which I do with my wonderful brother George. Uh, we it's a tune. We've had a riff for like 20 years in the back pocket, and we finally on this album we put it together. So, and every album that. Uh, Voyager tune I might play that one that's a finger style piece I won an award last year first place in the states for the IMA awards which was unexpected and cool so I do definitely love finger style guitar and um well, but I, I balance it you know like yeah there's definitely production and like being like bands uh, a band on the album as well right yeah yeah so. well listen I uh, want to tell you about this uh, this uh, new album Synergy it's the mm-hmm. musical product of his life's work ladies and gentlemen we're very excited about that um, I don't know what that means. A synergy of <laughs> limitless moments of balance, energy, laughter, and love. Energized by the Billboard chart success of his albums and singles, along with fruitful concert tours and festival dates across North America, multiple award-winning guitarist Rob Tardick returns with his sixth collection, Synergy. Um, 
why, why, why? Why Synergy? What's uh, Look, there's, I know you enough we, to know there's a story behind the of title. Of course, there has to be. I, I think we need that right now in the world, the state of the world. When I was looking at this album and where I've come to my life, and, uh, you know, I have that life mantra. You know, Bell has really kind of been the catalyst for me music-wise. Bell is, stands for uh, Balance, Energy, Laughter, Love, which is my kind of the way I, I try to lead my life. I'm trying to, I'm working to achieve balance, energy, and laughter and love in my life. And I think that's my principle. That's my faith in my in my. Um, existence i think and i try to pass that on through my music and my shows and everything revolves around that mm. mantra you know what i mean it's the right time for bell like, you know moments of bell synergy is <coughs> balance energy laughter love is a synergy of all these elements coming and working together you know so everyone it's um everyone my albums and limitless is being limitless in our, our lives you know taking moments in our lives taking all the all these things that we you know do in our daily lives and open new doors take risks take adventures you know, don't sit back on your laurels. You know, the pain and pleasure, Anthony Robbins. I've always, I, I bought that cassette tape with my brother when I was just a young wee lad. And uh, we listened to that on cassette and it stuck with me this day. It's the pain and pleasure principle. I, I really like that. I, I take the pain route always in life. I always take the pain so route. so weird, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just take a moment and explain to the uh, interns, the kids uh, mm. here and here, what, what a cassette tape is. Oh, a cassette tape is a... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say eight track, then I really lose it. Uh, <laughs> 1970. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Grandpa Simpson. Um, all right, let's get into a song. Shall we do that? Sure. Uh, first one going to be this one here. Oh, we can do that one. Yeah. Whatever sure. you feel like. Oh. We're, I mean, we're, we're cued for that, but it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, try that one. Hope that's uh, the. Th we're we're going to hope this one works. We're going to hope this one works. Um, you know, I always find it interesting when uh, artists um, sort of uh, set up instrumental songs mm -hmm. with meaning and like Tommy does that a lot of and I challenge him on this yeah. friends like how do you how do you go well this is an instrumental instrumental song and it's about yeah it's about what the music what do you mean it's about well the, and I wrote the song Angelina one of his songs yeah you know, and it's, it's beautiful beautiful, beautiful song Gorgeous. but you got to really be able to paint a story before you set up an instrumental song yeah can you really do that? Do. Are you good at that? Or because I suck. Abs <laughs> I've been doing it. That's well, like I said, I'm an instrumental bass artist for the most part. There are some vocal tracks I write and co-write, like I did on this album. But it's you know 80 percent instrumental music, and yeah, no, there's a vision and uh, you know the theme and uh, a motive and an idea and an emotion behind all my music. And ask about any title, and there's a story pretty much behind every single one of them. And hope, you know, these days I think. Like just with what's going on in the world these days, and this is gonna be a single I'm gonna release this year. We really need that hope. We really need that inspiration and because you know, there's been so much uh, division in the, in yeah. the world lately yeah. so you know i'm trying to embrace diversity bring people together bring that synergy that's the message behind the cd and, and let's hope for the best because we really need a better year than 2017 on a lot of counts. beautiful beautiful you ladies know? and gentlemen alive on the drew marshall show mr rob tardick
Yeah, baby, there it is, right there, Mr. Rob Tardick on the Drew Marshall Show. I'm the only person clapping in the room of seven people. That's right. Um, I'm not sure. Thank you for the clap. <laughs> Tom, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Emanuel's line, and the audience leapt to its foot. The audience. <laughs> Um, okay, crazy, really enjoyable. I'm not okay. sure if that described exactly what I was feeling. Do you feel the hope from that song? Do you feel like... I actually do. I think, you know, that's that's what I was trying to go for that when you were asking that question, right? I want, you know, after that home, I, I think you feel hopeful after yeah. that song. Like, there's good stuff coming. You know, life's going to get better. When was the... What? Oh, can I get so pr- uh, frazzled by the lyrical, lack of lyrical uh, mm-hmm. um, stuff? Yep. So well said. I'm in radio, folks. <laughs> you too can do this. So you got to compensate in many other ways, like live. You got to be. <sighs> my know. my my point is <laughs> my point is when it comes to uh, songwriting and um, and steering the audience in a direction you want them to go for them to be able to leave feeling something. Mm-hmm. What's the challenge for you? So when you're putting a concert together, like the one we're going to talk about uh, yep. at Rose Theater coming mm-hmm. up soon with mm-hmm. uh, Mark Masri mm-hmm. and uh, what's the uh, what the girl's name? Viva Trio. Viva Trio, who are coming on the show in a few weeks as well. Awesome. Um, when you're setting up a you know the, a, an entire show from first song to close, mm. and there's no lyrics there, is it, is it does that present a challenge setting up a, cho- a show? I guess not, because you've never lived in a world of lyrics. No, in generally. You know, like I said, there are some songs that I've written with lyrics. So, um, with do you perform something... them during your show? Yeah, we oh, do. We okay. do. Mark, we wrote a co-wrote a tune together with Mark Mazur, who's been on the show before. You know, was an amazing yep. singer and a great friend of mine. Uh, Once in a lifetime, we're doing that song. And like I said, I've I approached him on that tune. I had some music written to it, and I just needed the lyrics, his his skills and his talents. You know, and uh, we combined, collaborated, and synergized. And uh, yes, yeah, so we'll be doing that tune and, and some other uh, some other of the vocal tunes that I've written as well. But it's mostly, like you said, instrumental. But going back to your original question, you know, it's emo- it's based on emotion. You know, you know, I just I can just vibe. I can create an ebb and a flow to a show. Now I've been doing it for so long after it's just six albums and you know thousands. I've played so many times, whether it's for one person or a thousand or ten thousand people. Yeah, I just can feel the dynamics of the audience and what what sh- what songs are going to work. We always have some songs in the queue that we might you know we can sub in and out if I'm feeling the audience is kind of a little bit on the. Yeah. You know, they really want an adrenaline kind of tunes. Okay, yeah. let's cancel that one. That's too like mellow. Let's crank it up. Do you walk out, out into the crowd? I do all the time. I jump off the stage, and that's literally. Wow. Do you yeah. swing your hair like a hair band? Yeah. Kind of- you know what? The funny thing is, um, we, me and my drummer had this shtick we were doing like two two albums ago where we put on wigs because I did have a, I went through a rocker phase and a shred and me and my brother and like learned the the Van Halen and the Sacre really? and Steve I guitar yeah and there's actually an album on the uh, album and a song on the album that's dedicated to that style of guitar it's called SRT Rob Tardick uh, live in the studio here Rob let's do another tune if you don't mind here. yeah okay what are you gonna do what's it called what's it called a Voyageur we oh, what's with the voyage. French stuff Golden <laughs> Voyageur Synergy Voyageur Voyager, Voyager, eh? Voyager. Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, live on the Drew Marshall Show, our, our good friend, Rob Tardick. Mm-hmm. 